Hello class, Mr. Greeno here. In this video, I'm going to illustrate how to get started using Adobe Animate. So you click on your start button. Let it open up. Give it a couple seconds, it'll open. Because I've used it before, I see some recent files here you shouldn't see that but everything else should be the same so we're going to I don't want a full HD because that's the full screen I can go to more presets or I can just click create new it comes up with this dialog box and I want 1280 by 720 HD this should be on HTML5 canvas and then click create And so you get a blank document here, just a white rectangle on which you're going to do your animation. But let's first go over what all this stuff is. Sometimes it can be a little, a little intimidating. If you used uh, Photoshop before, which you should have in the web design course previously in my class, where you, where I went through a video and showed a little bit about how Adobe likes to work their interface. Uh, we kept it simple because you know, we didn't go that far into Photoshop at the time. But it's nice to know that the Adobe suite is sort of consistent from one program to the next. So for instance, in Photoshop, we use the lasso tool. So if we come over here, here's our main toolbar. And you should know that when the little triangle at the bottom right means there's more than one tool inside of this tool slot. They look they like to call it a tool slot. So if I click and hold down, I see my three options here. And I have the lasso tool, the polygon tool, and the magic wand. So if I go over and click polygon tool, the little icon changes. If I click hold down and go over and choose magic wand, the little icon changes. Now the tools in the tool slot may not be the same as Photoshop, but it could be, you know, they're similar. Ones that do not have a little triangle, you can click and hold down, but nothing's going to happen because there's only one tool there. So this is the brush tool. Notice over here is our context sensitive toolbar, meaning uh, options for the tool that you have selected. So when I go back to the magic wand, it changes. Here's that threshold thing. I think in Photoshop they call it tolerance, basically the same thing. How likely it is to choose sections that are a similar color to where you click. Uh, here's the, what is this, free transform tool. There's also this gradient uh, transform tool. So, and that doesn't really change anything here because I don't have anything selected to transform. So let's open a file so that we can see uh, things a little bit better. So I have um, this animation. Eddie Murphy. Now I did this in a previous version, so it's saying something about the font. It's like, okay, put in whatever font you want. Okay, and you can see that I have uh, over 2,000 frames on this. I'm going to scroll all the way back to the beginning. You can see all the different things I've done to make this animation. One of the things, you can't see all the layers right here, which I've named. But if I click here and drag up, you can see them all. Uh, one of the nice things about the Adobe stuff, you can change your interface however you want. You can drag this up. You don't have to leave it down here and then sort of scroll up and down to see what you're doing. You can drag it up big enough so you can see everything. If you have a whole lot of layers and it's got to all, go all the way up to here, well, then maybe you want to use the scroll bars. Um, this over here changes how big the uh, graphic is of the frames. So these are real tiny. These are really big frame 8, frame 9, or like, you know, real big there. Here's some of the buttons for navigating through the timeline. Once you have an animation, play, pause, you know, stuff like that. One thing we're going to do is we're going to set our preferences. So everybody make sure you do this. From preferences, from beginner to expert, which I think mine probably were already there, but just in case, expert. It just gives you a few more features on some of this stuff. And this stuff over here they call panels. So before I go on to that, let's go back to that free transform tool and click on this and now you can see a lot more options have popped up 
for the free transform tool because I've clicked on something. Now I'm going to click away and then it goes back to the document settings because I clicked in this outer area which they call the pasteboard. So if you have something selected, you want to unselect it, just click out here in the gray and it's unselected. So now the properties are being showed of my document because I don't have anything selected. When I select on something, then it shows me the properties of that particular thing I've selected. So back to the document properties. We also have library, all the things that are in my animation, assets, different things you can use. Okay, but we're not making an animation now. We're going over how to do stuff. We're just learning things about the interface. So I'm looking at my notes to make sure I don't forget anything. So I went over the toolbar, the button slots. Here's your timeline. These things are called panels. You can actually drag it off. You can collapse it. You can expand it. You can close it. When people close it, not actually close. Yeah, it's closed. It's not even like minimized. It's, it's closed, so you don't have it anymore. You can collapse this. You can expand it. You can expand this one too. So now I got something looking really different than when I started. How do I get that properties panel back if I need it? You can go up here to window and turn it back on. These one, two, three, these four are still on. This one's been turned off. You can turn on other ones. Like if you want the align panel, it put it somewhere over here. I tend to not modify anything in my interface because I'm making videos for students. And if mine looks different than theirs, it gets confusing. So I always use the Essentials workspace. But now I've changed it. And if you change it and you're like, oh, how do I get back? It doesn't look like the video anymore that I'm watching. Just go to Window, Workspaces. It should be set on Essentials. If not, choose Essentials. Then go back here and go down to Reset Essentials. And it's going to say, are you sure? Yeah. And then it puts it back the way it was. Properties is there. This is expanded. That's collapsed. I think the one thing, let's see, if I make this timeline higher, and let's see if that resets it. Workspaces, reset essentials, yes. You see, it even resets that. So it puts it back to the standard way. So if you're ever looking for something and you can't find it, and you see it in my video, and you're like, hmm, why see you have that and I don't? Reset your essentials workspace. That might do it. The other thing, too, is, if I have this toolbar, toolbar button selected and I have some image selected and you see this properties of uh, the free transform tool uh, selected on a, on a graphic and you don't have this, it's probably because you haven't clicked on this button and selected something. So you're not going to see this. You might see that. Okay, Make sure you have something selected like I do and then your panel over here should look the same way. certain things you should know about the timeline here so i'm going to drag this up so this is one thing you can sort of mess with because you want to see more of it you can scroll left and right this thing that you click over here this is called the playhead so you can drag it see how the animation plays okay put it exactly where you want when you're doing something one of the most common mistakes in uh, animate is people do something in their animation and when they have the playhead at a playhead at a certain position, uh, and then they realize, no, I wanted to do that when my playhead was over here. So always make sure you move the playhead first before you do the changes that you're going to do. So that's the timeline, the zoom tool. You can click this zoom tool. I mean, I really never do. You can you can just click and it zooms in. You can draw a rectangle and it zooms in. I guess you can go to minus and click, click, click until it goes out. But I never do that because there's just shortcuts that work so much better. You can hold down the control key. So now control key. On your keyboard, there's a key marked CTRL. It stands for control. There's also another key marked ALT. It stands for alternate. And they abbreviate it because just room on the keyboard. So everybody just says the alt key. But it stands for alternate, meaning when you're clicking and you have that down, the click does an alternate command other than just a click. So right now if I hold down the control key and I press the plus sign on my keyboard, well, let me go back, let me make sure I'm clicked. Well, <laughs> here's something weird. The plus sign on my number key doesn't zoom in. 
I have to choose the plus sign next to my backspace key to zoom in. And then the minus sign next to the zero on my keyboard. So plus and minus, zoom in and out. Curiously enough, on my keypad, where my number keypad is, if I click control minus, it actually does zoom out. But the plus sign doesn't work. I guess that's just an animate thing. So in Photoshop, you can use the plus and minus from the number key. But in animate, you have to use the plus that's next to the backspace key. The other way you can zoom in is so you hold down the control key and scroll the mouse wheel or spin the mouse wheel. You can uh, zoom in and out. So that's a real common thing. Rather than going to the toolbar button, it's just so much quicker to hit those keyboard keys or hold down control and spin in. So now if I want to modify this person's face and I he's off the screen now, so what do I do? I can grab this scroll bar and move. I can grab this scroll bar and move. Or if I click on the mouse wheel, you'll see I get the hand and I can drag that while I'm clicking on the mouse wheel. Or you can even hold down the space bar on the keyboard and then click with the left mouse button and drag. So that's up to you, but those are shortcuts that are used, I think, much more than trying to grab these scroll bars. But again, you can do that as well. And that's probably it for this video. I've showed you everything you need to know just to get started. And uh, we'll go on to the next video and actually make something. Thank you.